I was brand spanking new in town, having just accepted a transfer from my company. I won't lie, it was in part because of the upward step within the corporation, but it was also in large part due to the fact that my four-year relationship had recently grown as cold as the winters in Chi-Town. I was about due for some warm weather, and who knows, maybe even a warm body next to me if circumstances arose. When I got to town to do my apartment hunting, the relocation agency that I was working with said that this complex was full of upwardly mobile young execs and that I would fit right in. It was pretty nice, but I was actually sort of leaning toward one that came recommended from a college buddy who lived on the other side of town. That is, until I was shown the vacant apartment that the manager was proposing. It wasn't really the apartment itself that was all that impressive, but as the manager and I were leaving, we were walking up the steps to your apartment door, which happened to be right next to the one that I was being shown. It was a Saturday morning, and the ponytail under your Nike cap, your Howard University t-shirt, and your jogging tights told me that you were in your exercise mode. But I know natural beauty when I see it. I've always maintained that if a woman looks good while working out, you can bet your bottom dollar that she looks great when she gets you dressed for real. I was certain you fit that description. You smiled as you entered your apartment. I smiled back at you, and the manager smiled too, knowing that you had just sealed the deal for her. I moved in the following weekend, hoping to run into you as the movers helped me get things situated. I had no idea whether you had a man or not, but somehow I convinced myself that you didn't and that you and I would be great neighbors. After getting settled in, I made it my business to walk back and forth to my truck at least a half dozen times during the course of the evening, thinking that I might catch you in transit, or that you might at least peek out your window and remember me, but there would be no such luck. Through the course of that first week, I didn't see you at all, and certainly didn't hear a peek. I was starting to wonder if maybe you were visiting someone on that day that I saw you, and that I made a complete fool of myself by renting an apartment based on a false assumption. If you didn't live there, surely the manager knew that and had let me sign the lease anyway. I tried not to let it preoccupy me, as I still had a new job to get accustomed to. It was the start of the second week, and I was getting into the flow of things. I was settled in at the office and feeling my way around town a little. I had dinner and two glasses of wine at a nice little restaurant that I had found before making my way home that evening. I knew that I had a long day ahead of me the next day, so I decided to head to bed early. I sleep like a rock when I drink wine, so I was pretty much out of it. I actually thought I was dreaming when I started hearing the faint sound of moaning. The sounds got progressively louder before I realized that I was in fact not dreaming at all. I turned and looked at the clock, which read 1.13. That's when it hit me. It was coming from next door. This appointment was my first thought. Damn, she's got a man, and he's tearing that shit up. I figured it was nothing wrong with a little eavesdropper, and so I laid back to listen in. you were getting, your man wasn't making a peep. Now some people are quiet lovers, but not to say anything at all. I listened a little closer, and that's when I heard a very low hum. No, it can't be what I think it is. My thoughts were confirmed as that low hum turned to a fast buzz, and with it went the sound of your moaning. Soon the sounds of orgasm were echoing off your walls. Shit, you had me sweating by the time you were done. You probably rolled right over and went to sleep after you were done. But I sat up for a while, my dick as hard as a lead pipe. 